Hey guys, this is a things that I have finished number 37. So, um, I've actually only got two finished objects this week. The rest of them are all uh, works in progress. So, um, yeah. So it's been uh, about three weeks since my last things that I finished video and you'd think, sorry, you'd think that I'd gotten more finished than this, but not so much. Um, just a little disclaimer, if you see the cat, he's a little bit um, upset this week and I will tell you why in just a minute. Also, if you see a ginormous dog pass by, I will explain that too. Or if she like makes some kind of crazy noises because she's been making crazy noises. Um, but I'll get to all that in just a minute. So, two. Two things that I finished. Um, one is this. This is just a granny square design. And it's out of that baby yarn. The Bernat uh, baby or blanket. It's the same thing now. This is just one of the baby colors. This was just some leftover um, from a hat that I made uh, for someone. And I really dislike this yarn. It's For me, it's hard to work with. It may not be hard to work with for everybody, but for me, it's just a pain. So what I did was I made this big granny square out of some of the um, scraps. And what I'm going to do with this is put it um, on my cat, Henry's um, cat tree. Because he really likes to lay on this super soft yarn. Um, he's already been laying on this a little bit while I was working on it. So I'm going to put it, he's got these little round... Um, like the stand part so you can look out the window. I'm going to put this down in there so he's got something soft to lay on. So um, that's just, you know, I was just trying to use up some of my scraps. And I, oh, look, I'm wearing my Minions t shirt. But anyway, okay. <laughs> I'm a little ADD today. My second thing that I've finished, my very first, it's not my very first thing that I've knit ever, but um, whew, my first thing that I've actually like. I think I have cat hair in my eyes. Woo! Hold on, guys. Sorry. First thing that I've ever knit, like, correctly or, you know, using different techniques other than just the knit stitch. So, I made a dishcloth. It's kind of small, but um, I did follow the directions. It's the Granny's favorite dishcloth or Granny's dishcloth. Um, and I used the needle size that it said to. Um... And everything but um, it's a little small but it, uh, what it's gonna be for is I'm gonna make a little set of these for my friend she's having a baby so I'm just gonna make her a little I'm gonna do like maybe four of them and tie them together as part of her baby shower gift so it doesn't matter that they're small once I make some more the next time I make a set gosh I'm so sorry that like I said he'd been laying on that things so and have cat hair all over my face but um, when I make some more, I'm going to make them on a bigger needle to um, just kind of make them a little bit bigger. I mean, they're not super tiny, but um, they're smaller than like a store-bought washcloth. So, I'm just going to make them a little bit bigger next time. And um, this is just cotton yarn. It's some of that lilies and cream or peaches and cream, which I'm convinced is the same thing. Just a different name for each retailer. Um, it's coming out a little bit darker than it is... In real life, it's more like a denim blue. Um, and this is just the dishcloth where you start and you increase till you get to the middle, and then you decrease till you get down here to where there's only four stitches left, and then you just bind off. Um, it they're not they're they're not hard to make. I, I I did really well. It's a great way to practice the increases and decreases. Um, but this, I think it's the yarn. Um, it hurts my hands. I think because it doesn't, cotton yarn doesn't have as much give and flex to it. It's kind of a struggle to do the decreases. For me, I don't know if it's just maybe I, I'm a tight knitter or whatever. But the, the decreases are a bit of a struggle for me. Um, and I am using um, those... I'm using a size 6, 4 millimeter, which is what the pattern calls for. But I think I'm going to go up to my 5 millimeter needles next time just to try to get a bigger, you know, just to get a bigger washcloth. But I am going to make like four this size so they all match for her. 
Um, it's a little boy, so I'm going to make a couple of these blue ones and then a couple of white ones and put them together. Um, and those are my only two finished objects, <laughs> but because um, I've been playing around with all the knitted stuff, you know, trying to learn different techniques and, um, you know, just basic techniques basically, but it's still, you got to practice. So um, I have started on the next one for her. It's, it's a, this is the white one. Same exact thing. I'm using this. These are too, probably too big, this this length of cord, but I don't have a lot of options. I showed last week where I, or last time where I got some of these on clearance at Michael's. So I don't have a lot of different options in cord length. So, I mean, it's not bothering me. I could probably do two on here, but um, that probably would just get on my nerves with all the fiddliness. But anyway, um, I am just working on the white one. Like I said, I'm going to do two white ones and two blue ones is my plan so far um, for these. And they're just going to go in her little bag that I'm doing for of just stuff for her baby shower. So I'm going to wash them too because the cat sat on this one. <sighs> but yeah, these are the same needles I used for that one. They're the 4 millimeter size 6. And they're just those nitpick zings. And I, I like these. Um, I mean, I don't have anything to compare them to, really. So, but I do like them. The next thing that I've been working on, I say have been working on, not really, um, is I brought the pattern. I brought the pattern out. This is the. Uh, let me see if I can find the name. The name of it. The 22.5 Degrees by Martina Bim. And this is the same person who makes the Hitchhiker, but this is her a free pattern she has. And um, this is what it looks like. It's just like a triangle shawl. Um, with, up the middle, it's got, like, the little uh, yarn over um, things. Um, so, I mean, it's free. I can show you the, the pattern. I just have, this is... This is my notes, and I'll just tell you about that in just a second. Um, so, here's what I have so far. And these are on, also, these are also the 4 millimeters, I think. Yeah, U.S. size 6, 4 millimeters. And this yarn is some of the Deborah Norville Serenity yarn, sock yarn in uh, color teal tees. Teal tees. Yeah, teal tees, although this is the only teal right here, so it's more purple. But anyway, so I did start, I started working on this right after um, the last episode or whatnot that I did. Um, I don't know, I just don't like the pattern. I think for me... I think you can, can you tell too where I've gotten off? See the holes? I don't know if you can tell. Let me see if I can get it. Okay, so the holes are supposed to go right up the middle. And this may just be me. I'm, I'm new at this and that's fine. But see, I've already messed up. You see the holes going up the middle? The hole's over here now. That's not right. But um, the problem I have with this, I don't have any problem with the yarn overs, the increases or decreases, which is basically all this is, and the knit stitch. The problem I have is that um, you have to put these yarn over, this yarn over, it's like you do a yarn over, let's see, hold on, I can tell you because it's free, it's a yarn over, knit one yarn over to make these little, uh, like this little spine, I guess is what I would call it, and that's not the, my problem. I don't have any problem with that. And this is, this is, the pattern's easy to read. I don't have a problem. The problem I have, I guess I should just get to it, is that you put those in the middle. Which doesn't sound like a big problem. But it gets tedious for me to count my stitches to the middle. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I guess I could just, because you don't, you don't do this this hole in the middle every row it's every like third row yeah every third row so I guess I could just I could just count it every row and then 
you know, see where I, where the middle is. But honestly, what happens is I get distracted. I forget, you know, what stitch I'm on. And then I basically end up having to count each one of these little bitty stitches. So I think probably I'm going to pull this out because I'm just not feeling it. Now, I think what I could probably do um, to do this pattern and kind of, because um, it's, I mean, it's super pretty. And I really like the way this yarn's turning out. But I might go up to a bigger yarn so that my stitches will be would be easier to count and, and do it that way. Or if you guys know of an easier way to know where the middle is. I mean, I know that sounds silly. To, I guess what I could do is, is establish the middle and then put a stitch marker in the middle and then I would know. But still, I would, want, I would need to count to be exactly in the middle. Maybe this is just not the pattern for me. That's maybe that's just too It's just too needy of a pattern for me at this point. So I'm probably gonna rip that out I do have a bunch of this kind of this Deborah Norville. I probably showed you guys this several um, Several like episodes ago where I got it all on clearance at Michael or no at Joann's I got it on clearance and I was able to use a coupon So I didn't pay hardly anything for these and they're just so pretty so I pro I'm going to use this um, now that I'm kind of, I'm knitting officially. Um, I'm going to use this, pro not for socks, because I haven't delved into that, you know, I haven't delved into that yet. So, but I think they make, they work up beautiful in a shawl type pattern. So I may just find a slightly less needy pattern for me to work on and do that. So, you know, you live and you learn. It's not a big deal. Um... You know, it happens. Okay, so the next thing I'm working on is that same girl who I'm making the, um, lost my words. I'm making the dishcloth for. I'm also making this blanket. And here's the thing. I'm making the blanket. It's the same pattern. I started the blanket before I started the dishcloth. It's the exact same pattern. You work it the exact same way. Um, and this is some yarn that I've had sitting around forever, and it is not good for crochet necessarily because of all this, um, let me see if you can see it. See all this fluff? See how it's got like a halo thing going on? It's just hard. It gets, ta it gets tangled for me when I crochet with it. I do not know what kind of yarn this is anymore. Um, the ball band has long since been vamoosed. Um, I have worked several different things from this, um, and then not liked it and pulled it back. Um, it's just, it's a very pretty yarn. It's very soft. Um, I have seen this before at Michael's, like I've seen it since at Michael's. So it is a, it is a brand that you can get. And it's probably so, I mean, it's either, it's probably Bernat or something like that. It's very soft and squishy and there's like a bunch in here. So... This I'm doing on size 9, 5.5 millimeter needles. This doesn't really, okay, this has a pattern, but um, let me just show it to you first. So it's on these. These needles obviously will not probably be long enough at some point, but maybe they will be. It'll be okay because I don't have any longer. I could always go get some, but you know, whatever. So <laughs> um, I'm just kind of experimenting. So this is the same pattern, if you can see. You just increase, it's got the same holes. They're just a little harder to see because this yarn is so fluffy. But they've got the same increase holes as the washcloth. And you just go up till you get to a certain amount of stitches, which is 144 on this one according to the pattern. And then you start decreasing the same way you do with the washcloth till you get to the end. So it's a very simple, repetitive type pattern. Um, yarn is super soft. I hope I get the, her, I always do this. Her baby shower is just like next month or this at the end of this month. So I may not get this done, but I do have a blanket that I made for a boy a, while, a little while back that I crocheted that's super cute. So if I do not get this done, then I will pull from that. I'll just get that that I've already made and put it in there. So. I'm not pressuring myself too much because if I try to go too fast because I'm still kind of new, um, I'll drop a stitch and then I'll just be so upset. 
So um, these needles are again the same, the ones I got on clearance. These are also the, it's not, is it Knit Picks? No, it's Knitter's Pride. Knitter's Pride. This is the package for the Zings. But um, these are the Jazzy or Jazz ones. They're the ones that are like wooden. And these are the nine, uh, size nine, 5.5 millimeter needles. And I'm not sure how long the cord is. It's just, I didn't have a lot of choices in the cord. So, and these are the ones that are like pretty rainbow wood. And actually, I didn't think I would because these are a little bit blunt, more blunt, and these are more sharp. Um, these are obviously, these are two different size needles, but you guys will just use for comparison here but um, the tips on the zings are a lot more pointy it's kinda hard to see but they're a lot they're sharper you can feel it when you touch them they hurt your finger they'll hurt your fingers if you stab yourself too hard with them but um, I do actually like these better um, the wooden ones they're super light and I get I don't know if they're actually like I'm saying they're wood and I think it, what it said, I think the package said they were wood. So I'm thinking they're like, I don't know, but they're, they're pretty, they're super pretty and they're light. So I like those. Of course, like I said, I haven't had a lot of experience with different kind of needles. So I'm not sure, you know, if I will end up like in the metal ones better than the wooden ones or not but so that's that there's not I'm not rushing myself on that I'm not giving a lot I'm not doing a lot of pressure no pressure so the main thing the main work in progress that I've been working on is out of that Mandela yarn that I got last that I showed I did the special little snippet episode on that I got at Walmart and um this is the genie colorway that I'm working this project in. And let me show you. This I'm pretty proud of because this is actually turning out like the picture. So I'm working this on those on the zings. Um, and this is on a size 5 millimeter US 8, which is not the needle that the pattern necessarily calls for. I'll I'll show you the I'll do the pattern in a second. So it is scrunched up a little. But you can see it, this is the what's left in the, the ball. So you can kind of see, let me see if I can unscrunch it a little bit here. Um, it, this is just a triangle type shawl or, you know, next shawlette or next scarf or whatever. But you can see the color changes now in this. Let me start from the bottom. So you start down here, you just cast on a couple and then you um, increase on one side and decrease on the other so that you get this kind of flat on one side and curved on the other so it goes from it goes from this like almost black it's more like a really dark charcoal gray but it almost it's almost black and then it kind of subtly goes into this actually charcoal color a lot of charcoal <laughs> and then you get into this light steel type gray right here, this lighter. So it just fades into that. And then, sorry about the needles poking around everywhere. I don't know, I think I put it up the wrong way. So then you kind of get this slight fade here from this um, steel color into a slightly lighter. And then it go, then it actually transitions into this kind of dove gray color. And it's a little bit lighter than what it's showing up on the screen, but it's, I don't know, it's fairly good. And then it kind of does that, that little slight transition again, um, and then it goes into this cream color. And then I'm finally getting into this um, sea foaming type color, and then it'll go into this teal, and then back into this, this is actually, you can see it on this side, yeah, this is actually a repeat, I think, of that, uh, slate type steel blue this blue the steel gray the dovey gray the darker gray and then the really really dark one down in the middle so it should end back here in this color which I think is kind of cool 
Um, I do like, now this is the first thing I've ever made with these color changing yarns. So what I plan on doing is um, I'm going to pick a different one, like a, one of the other brands, um, and make something similar-ish. Do another type shawl type thing. Maybe not the same pattern, maybe, just what I feel like. And see how the color changing compares. But so far with this, I really do like how it kind of goes... Let me see where it's at. Like, right, I like this transition where it's almost like it takes this color and this color and blended them together and got this so that it's not just a stark, you know, like here it goes again, right here where it does this, where it kind of feels like you took this color and mixed it in with this color and then got the one in the middle. I do like that better, I think, than I like this where it just stark changes from, um, cream to teal but I understand and because if if it was just these colors and then this and then repeated these colors again it would be a little bland I think so I understand they they have this pop in here and it will transition just from what the ball looks like it looks like it will transition this color right here looks like when I'm finished the, with this color, it looks like it'll look like this color and this color blended together to make this one. So it will kind of still have a, like a cohesive type concept going on. Okay, so like I said, these are on US size 8 5mm needles. And the original pattern that I used is the same pattern for that white worsted weight triangle that I was working on that I showed y'all a couple times ago. I do still have that. It's put away right now. Um, I, th I will work on it, but what I think was a mistake that I made um, was my needles for that are too small for the worsted weight. And I did say something about that in that video. Um, I do like the, the fabric that it's making, but it is kind of hurting my hands being so tight. It seems like I may be a tight a tight knitter which could just be that I'm just starting and I hold my yarn too tight but anyway so the original pattern all the patterns that I mentioned are, are free um, oh I do have one other work in progress to show you if I can find it I'm gonna show it to you um, anyway that pattern is not free it's only this first pattern I've ever bought so um, I'll probably have to get up I think it's just right over there but so um, it is called the Be Simple Shawl, and I think I showed you this last time where all I did was I wrote it. I just printed the actual pattern page to save on paper and ink. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. So, uh, this one says that what you should be using, let's see. Um, I'm, this one I don't have, I guess the page... Okay, this one doesn't necessarily give you a strict um, which needle you're supposed to be using. It pretty much gives you a gauge that you should be getting um, and then just use the appropriate needles for whatever gauge you want to get. I did not do a gauge swatch because I'm, I don't know, because I'm just basically learn. I'm, I'm, I'm learning and I'm playing and I'm, if I was to ever tackle something like a garment I would I would most definitely do a gauge swatch um, and all that but right now I'm just kind of feeling it out and um, so I didn't but anyway this pattern the be simple shawl okay so that's what I, I started that's what the the white one was um, oh look guys sorry this is this this is in the Mandela by Lime brand in the color Genie. That's the yarn that I'm using for this. I just didn't. I got so excited about the pattern that I forgot to tell you that. But anyway, so somebody mentioned um, the last actual, like the things that I finished, number 36, or whichever, the last one that I did. Somebody mentioned in the comments that they wanted to try the ex boyfriend shawl. Um, and it is a design by Jennifer Beaver, and it's a stripy 
shawl, triangly type thing. So, and it actually recommends using fingering weight yarn um, and using a 3.75 US needle and it gives you the gauge and all that again. So, um, and I think the gauge is pretty similar to the other one. Yeah, it's pretty similar. But anyway, so I started looking at this pattern. And I did print out the whole pattern. This is what it looks like. And she had said it looks like a pretty simple pattern. Um, what makes it look more complicated are the color changes. And I was like, well, I'm going to look at that. And I went out and I actually had a really hard time finding that needle size. Um, I did eventually find it. But um, anyway, I didn't. Anyway, so here's the, this is a free pattern, so here's the actual pattern page. And what I noticed when I started reading this is that this shawl, this is why I don't like to print the whole thing, because there's a blank page. I'll just put that over here so I can use it again. But anyway, this shawl is exactly the same construction as this one. This is this, it's the same pattern. Um, so... Basically, all that you do, same pattern. It even starts out with the same amount of stitches. So you start out with two stitches on your needles, um, and you just, basically you knit one. And it's a, okay. Why well, I don't know why I'm trying to act like I'm going to be teaching somebody how to do it. But, um, oh, and thank you so much to the people who gave me hints and tips and tricks about how to tell on which side that I was doing my knit two togethers and which side I was doing my knit front and back. I don't know why I didn't think about, um, you know, just think about the construction. And so whoever it was, I thank you so much who said, it's a very obvious now that I, now that she pointed it out, I don't know why I didn't think about this before. So my straight side, the side that doesn't curve is the knit two together side. Okay, and then my side that curves, so like, it's hard to see because it's all scrunchied up, but here you go. See, the side that curves like this is my increase side. So, duh, why didn't I think of that? It's a newbie, newbie thing. It's just not, I just wasn't familiar enough with the construction and what the stitches looked like, I guess, to, like, see it in my mind. But thank you so much um, to the person who pointed that out. I really appreciate it because that made it so much less stressful for me to sit this down on whatever row that I needed to sit it down on. I What I was doing with the white one or cream, whatever um, color that I think it's, it's cream, it's creamy white, is I would do two rows. I would always have to do my rows and sets of two so that I would end up on the increase row or the deep which so I would always end up on the same side so I wouldn't forget which side I was on which um is not a huge deal it's not like a game changer but I only get like I would be knitting on my lunch break and I only get so much time and I was always like oh god what if I don't what if I'm not able to knit the row back and that kind of stuff but she pointed that out to me, and I'm so happy that she did, because now I don't even have to worry about that. I can just tell that this is the row that I start my, um, that I do my increase, my knit front and back, and that this is the, the side that I will do my knit two together, because it's straight. And that, that's just such awesome knowledge. I love it. Appreciate that so much, whoever uh, mentioned that. I really, really, I'm sorry I didn't look up your name before I started. But that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. So much. It just blows my mind. Just one of those mind-blowing moments. It's like, why didn't I think of that? So, I still had that in my lap. Let me grab that other thing real quick. Real quick. Ooh. Oh, it's all tangled up, of course. Okay, so I did buy a pattern. And I didn't print it out yet because I was just using on my computer and the pattern is the oh my gosh let me look it up on my phone hold on so unprepared it is a paid for pattern but it was only a couple of dollars so I was like well I think I can do it 
this is the wavy checkerboard baby blanket pattern and it was two dollars and the pattern the store is called bunny totem knits it's on Ravelry um, is where I found it just if you're looking for it type in wavy checkerboard baby blanket um, so and Aaron the um, who does the gimme yarn 418 you know you know, everybody knows Erin. Um, she had made one of these out of the um, Karen Cakes and out of the Pops or the Sweet Roll. Yeah, Sweet Rolls. And they were so beautiful. And I was like, and she said the pattern's not that hard, which it's not. I was, you know, because when somebody who's like such a beautiful knitter as she is says the pattern's not that hard, I'm always like, oh gosh. But me, I'm like a big goofball who doesn't know how to do anything. So it's probably like extremely difficult for me. No, it wasn't bad. Um, the only, the actually only thing so far I've had a problem with is I had to learn the long tail cast on, which was the actual, hold on, let me just, I'll, let me show you. So this yarn is not necessarily, it doesn't show the pattern, I don't think, as well as a solid color does. Or a color that's less color changing. This is like a super variegated yarn that I found at Walmart. But I still think it's it's super pretty. See these little pearl? They're basically they're pearls, pearls and knits. See them? Aren't they pretty? I think it'll be super pretty when I'm done. And this was actually the blanket that I was thinking about making for the the girl who's having the baby but I'm thinking this one is going to be something I need to practice on and kind of work on slowly and it's going to take me a while because there are a couple of like techniques in here that I'm just that are new to me so I just wanted to take my time and kind of work on this as you know as I do so this is on US size 7.4.5 millimeter needles these are those wood ones again which I just, I really like. Again, this the cord is probably eventually, well, no, I mean, it's long enough because this is not going to get any longer than this. It's just going to get longer this way. But anyway, um, I think it's, it's a very pretty, very, very pretty. Easy to follow pattern. It's kind of, I think you'll be able to see it when I've got more of it done. And this is the yarn that I'm using. And I don't have the band for this yarn. I don't know where it went. But it's it came from Walmart, and I'm thinking it is a... It's in there. Okay, so at my Walmart, they kind of have their, their yarn. They only have one aisle, which is horrible. We need more than one aisle of yarn. But they have one little, one little side of an aisle, okay, divided into different so they have like the baby yarn in one section the fancy yarns in another section fancy for Walmart fancy yarns and then the red heart yarns at the end so this was in their baby yarn section and I think it's just some kind of it's not red heart it's probably like, it's like a probably like a lion brand or a Bernat baby and it's just this like super crazy I don't know just looks like a just looks like a party <laughs> but it's I mean it's really pretty so okay what I was gonna say is this is knits and pearls which um, I knew how to do the knit stitch before this but the pearls always kind of trip me up I have been doing I mean I'm doing a lot better with the pearls I've kind of gotten the hang of that the only thing in this one that did trip me up was just the initial initial cast on. So I've just been doing a regular old cast on, but this one called for a uh, long tail cast on, which I've heard of before, but I've never done. So I had to go uh, and look at several YouTube videos to figure out how to do that. Um, and I had a really hard time, honestly. Again, because I'm left-handed, I do everything in the wrong hand. So I have to really play with it and, and figure out the best way to switch it around for me to do it in the hand that I need to do it in. So I did figure that out 
And I did, I mean, it was super, the actual put casting on was super easy. The only thing I had a problem with, and I did have to rip back, there's like a hundred and something of these cast on stitches. And I had to do it tw two or three times because I didn't leave a long enough tail. And I don't know if there's a way, and see now I've got, this is how much I had left this time. So obviously I had a whole bunch, a whole huge tail this time. So I don't know if there's a way to tell um, better, like exactly how long you need your tail for a long tail cast on by how many stitches you're doing. Um, or if you just eyeball it and you just eventually kind of learn how many stitches you need. So yeah. So anyway, that's, it's just another, I'm just doing several, you know, different to learn. This one has pearls and the long tail cast on some of my other ones increases and decreases. And I'm just kind of, just kind of practicing my skills. Um, I still think that overall crocheting to me is easier, but I have been doing it a lot longer. Um, I do like the, um, the reason, the whole reason I got in, I, um, started trying to relearn how to do this was, f um, for the shawls. Like, you can make such beautiful, beautiful shawls and scarves and, um, well, it's like the shawls, but, you know, you can wrap around your neck and they look kind of like scarves. Um, you can make such beautiful ones in knit. And, yes, you can do those in crochet, um, sort of, but they're not the same. A lot of times they're a lot more bulky, um, a lot. They just don't drape as the same as the knits, as knitting does. And it's just a difference in the fabric and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, this is something I just, I work on, some, you know, when I have the patience because it does take me a lot more concentration than some of the other ones because it's a different a different skill um something I have kind of I mean I've heard this before but it just blows my mind is how much less yarn knitting uses than crochet like I don't know like I'm trying to think this I don't, I don't even have, okay, so my, this thing, this, this shawl, shawlette, whatever that I'm making, that's this big triangle, there is no way that I would get a whole accessory, a whole shawl out of just one of these if I was crocheting. There's just no way um, that I, that I would be able to do it. Some people, sure, I'm sure they could, but not me, there's no way. I would have to have two. Um, but I think with that, I'm going to have a perfectly usable sized item shawl when I'm done with that. So that just blows my mind. Um, and I do have those, um, two skeins of yarn or two hanks cause they're not whatever. They're not skeined up. So, um, from the Vulan Vine, Kristen from the Vulan Vine yarns. So I have those two and after I perfect some of my, Knitting skills, I will pro I will try to make a shawl out of that because, yeah, I could actually get a usable item um, out of that. <laughs> you see Lola? I could get a usable item out of that without, you know, running out of yarn. Um, she's looking out the window. I have the window open over here. But anyway, yeah, so I'm super excited. I'm learning new stuff. And, um, wah. And, uh. That kind of thing. So, um, I do have a couple things that I bought this week. If I can reach them. Because there's a doggy in my lap. Um, so, I went to, not my local yarn store. Because I'm going to tell you, I do have a LIS um, near, well, not, it's not near me. It's like 10, 20 minutes down the, probably 20 minutes down the road. Which is not far, but they are kind of not nice in there. Um, like, they're not, they're not hateful. It's not like going to, you know, Walmart and the people are like, man, I don't want to help you. But they're very, I always, um, they, they're kind of stuck up, to be honest. Um, and I am a crocheter, you know. And, um, that's, I mean, even though I'm, I'm doing some, I'm getting into knitting, I'm 
traditionally I'm a crocheter. So um, I've been in there before. They're not very helpful. They they just I don't know if I don't just look like I'm gonna be able to drop twenty dollars on a scanny yarn or thirty or whatever. They just don't particularly want to help me. Um, they're not very helpful on the phone if you call and ask for if they've got something. They're just, I don't know. I get the vibe like they just, they think I'm not woohoo enough to be shopping in their yarn store. Um, so I don't go in there hardly ever. Um, I just, I don't like that kind of awkwardness that they, they make me feel like I shouldn't be in there. Um, like I'm not fancy enough to shop in their store. So... I just don't like that vibe. So anyway, me and my mom were out in Murfreesboro, which is about an hour um, or so from where we live. Um, we go out there every so often. They have um, a Chinese food place that we really like. So um, sometimes on the weekends, if we're both off, um, well, she works a regular like Monday through Friday job. So she's always off on the weekends, but I don't. So I'm not always off on the weekends. But sometimes if we're both off, we'll go out there, we'll eat Chinese food, we'll shop around. And they do have, they have a um, local yarn store out there that I've heard some good things about. It's called the Naughty Knitter, which I think is pretty funny. Like, naughty, like, it's a play on words. I think it's hilarious. But anyway, so I have called them before with questions or emailed them with questions. And they're always really nice. So I went in there just to look around. I took my mom, who was blown away by two things. One, how pretty all the yarn is, and two, by how expensive it all is. She's like, oh my God, she's like, I can't imagine asking you to bake me a pair of socks or something out of yarn that costs 40 bucks. And I was like, she goes, I'll just go get my socks from Walmart. <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was, that was cute. But, um, so I have mentioned a couple times that I think my, um, length on my cord is not going to be long enough for, you know, like a blank, that blanket or whatever, um, or like a shawl that I, that, that's worked lengthwise and not from the small to the large, or you get my drift. Um, so I did go by there because I also wanted to try some, a different kind of needle. Um, and I, I like to be able to like see things in person before I buy them, just one of those old school type of people. So I went in there, and um, they were super nice. They were having just a kind of a nitty get together. It was on a Saturday, so there's a bunch of people sitting around. They were super laid back and nice. I really like them. I wish it wasn't an hour away, but um, I did get another. Let's see if you can see that. I got another of these Knitters Pride needles. Yeah. So um, okay, these are the. These are the wood ones, or the wood-ish ones, whatever they're actually made out of. Yeah, it says wood on here, I guess. Anyway, these are a size 5, which seems to be what I've used quite a bit of. But the, the cord on these are 40 inches. Which is, um, I think most of mine are in the 20-something, so these are probably twice as long as some of my other ones. Um, and these say they're dreams, which is not what my wood ones had said they were. So I'm not sure the difference, to be honest. They did not have ones that said jazz, which is what mine said. Um, I don't know if it's just because they're a different color. Like, these are um, mostly just red. Different tonal reds. But I got these because I know I like these. Um, and they... They were uh, more expensive than the ones I bought on clearance, of course. But I do know I like these, so I was kind of willing to spend a little bit on them. They weren't that. They were like 10 bucks, So it's not like they were super expensive like some of the needles can get. And then the other thing I got, another set of needles. These are in the same size because I kind of wanted to try out and test. See if I see what kind of needles I liked the best. Um, and I think that to do that, I would... not to be able to compare them to see what I feel works best for me, they kind of need to be the same, I figured. And these were actually not expensive at all, either. They had the um, Chai Goo, the Stainless Steel. These are the um, 
circular red lace, red lace circulars in a size 8, um, 40 inches or 100 centimeters. They're the same size as these, but they're the Chigu ones. It's the, it's a package. Sorry, the packaging is very like ref, is like super reflective, and I haven't taken them out yet. Um, I'm not going to until I'm ready to use them. But the the cord is different. The the join where they join in looks different than these. Um, so I'm I'm interested to see um, whether I like these better or whether I like these. So yeah, and I'm not sure why they're. I guess the red lace is just when it says lace and it's I guess that's just the kind of cord it has. Um everybody knows about these. It says they're made by from surgical steel, um, flexible laser marked needles to have the sizes on them, which I'm just gonna have to take their oh there it is. I was like, I'm gonna have to take their word for it because I don't see it. Now I will say just from seeing these the needle size on here is hard to read compared to on the um, Knitter's Pride, even the, the metal ones. It's a lot easier to read than this one. But anyway, they were super nice. Um, this is just, it's they don't have a special bag. This is just like, you know, I don't know where, I, this is kind of, you know, like you get these bags. It's not, it's not like their personal bag. But anyway, that was that. That was my adventure. The only things that I bought um, these last couple weeks, um, knitting related. And um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying those out. I'm going to try to kind of finish a couple of these things that I already have. I don't want to be one of those people that has like 20,000 things on the, <laughs> the needles at once. But I find myself like really wanting to do that because I'll be playing in Ravelry and I'll see something that I, I'm like oh I need to try that and I'm like oh I don't want to cast on something else but I really really want to so um yeah I'm trying to resist casting on everything that I see that I want to try um but yeah so that's my kind of adventures in knitting that are going on so um yeah, I think that's all of, like, the yarny related stuff. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of talking about what's going on. Um, so, if you don't like that part, you don't have to watch. I won't, my feelings won't be hurt. Um, so, what's going on this week or these last couple of weeks um, is I am dog sitting for my mom and, and my dad. I don't know why I always say my mom. Like, it's my mom's dog or it's my mom's house. For my mom and my dad. I just forget about poor old dad. Um, but I'm babysitting their dog. And I'm going to call it babysitting. Because their dog is such a baby. She is a English Mastiff. And she weighs like a hundred and some odd pounds. Like over 150 pounds. She is. I keep looking because she's over, she's over there. But I keep. She's just such a freaking baby. <laughs> She is so labor intensive. She is so sweet. She's like the sweetest dog ever. But she is very timid and very high strung, I guess is a good way. She's scared of everything. Loud noises scare her. Um, things that move really fast scare her. She's just very, very timid. Um, if you drop something, it freaks her out. Something awful. And... That's not something I'm used to because my dogs are very like, oh, you made a big bang noise? Who cares? We're cool. Um, but anyway, so she's a, she's been crying a little bit because she misses them. She's very, very attached to my parents, especially my dad. Um, but yeah, every time me or Adam comes through the door, she's like sad because it's not them. But, um, they're gonna, they're gone for the weekend, um, and they usually take her with them when they go places, they, but they're going to a race this weekend, there's some, one of the NASCAR, I'm not, like, a NASCAR person, they are, they like the races, so they're going to one, and it's just not a situation where they can take her, um, it's too, they don't, you don't know how warm it would be to leave her in the car, 
Um, and that's a long time to let her be in the car and a lot of, like, people going back and forth. And they can't leave her at the hotel because that's just a long time for her to be by herself in a hotel with people slamming doors and people talking and it would scare her. So, um, there, I'm watching her. Usually I watch her at their house, but we're trying it at my house this time, um, mostly because if I go to her house, I have to pack up the dogs and my two dogs and all of their stuff and they don't have a fenced in yard and um I do and it's just a lot of and um especially with Lola being delicate right now with her neck and back thing they have a two-story house they their bedroom is on the second floor so I would have to make sure that Lola didn't run up and down those stairs very much I would have to carry her up there and carry her down um, which is not a huge deal. I could do that no problem. I just don't want her running and hurting herself up and down those stairs. It's just, it's a little hard to keep her from doing what she wants to do. So we brought, um, her name's Abby. We brought Abby here and she's been a little out of sorts, which is understandable. She's like super clingy. Um, but she's doing okay. This is day two. Um, of her being here. She does cry a little bit. I think she went to bed, actually. Um, she went to take her a nap. But she is crying just a little bit, which is sad. But I think she's liking it okay. Um, she plays with the dogs a little bit. My dogs. I'd say, like, she's not a dog. Um, she's almost more of a person <laughs> than a dog. So, and we have a fenced-in backyard, so, um, I don't worry about her getting away from me. Um, you know, so it's just an overall type of better deal but what it is doing is it's freaking Henry out so Henry the cat who is asleep in his little bed over here Henry Henry tuna what you doing you wanna come over here and say hi come here tuna come here he might come over here but um anyway he he's used to dogs he's used to, to Lola and Stitch and they are rough with tuna I call him Tuna. His name is Henry. We call him Henry Tuna. Um, he ain't getting up. He's taking a nap. But anyway, he is not, not used to big dogs. And I think while Abby would be far more scared of him than he ever would realize, like he could beat her up. She's such a baby. He is a little bit on... A grump about her being here. She's not bothered him. She actually wags her tail when he walks anywhere near her trying to be friendly. He just is not having it. He's not hissing or poofing up or trying to hit her or scratch her or anything, but he is also not wanting to eat. He eats on my table over here, um, which is where he prefers for me to watch him munch on his food. So he's not really eating, which I'm not too worried about because he's just out of sorts. He has food in his bowl. If he gets hungry, he will eat. Uh, I may go get him some kitty snacks later and, you know. He's kind of on a, he, we had to put him on a diet because he was getting a little chunky. So he's not, it's not going to hurt him if he only kind of eats his food. So anyway, so that's the kind of, you know, he's being a cat about it. And he's being very like, I'm going to mark all my territory. I'm going to bump your head. And I'm going to rub myself all over everything. So she knows that this is my stuff. I told my I told my mom. I said if, she, if he walks up to her and bumps her on the nose. You know like cats do with the little batten thing. She will freak out. <laughs> I just kind of want her to do it. Just to see her do it. Uh, or see him do it. But anyway. They just, they don't bother each other, but he's just a little pissy about it. Um, yeah, so that's basically kind of what's, what I'm doing. I'm stuck basically at home. I mean, I can go out places, um, but I've been kind of staying in, at home for the last day or so, just kind of keeping her company and, you know, that kind of cleaning up the house. Um, so yeah, I'm on vacation, which is, <laughs> which is why I'm at home not doing anything, so I'm not go, I'm not, it's like one of those, it's a staycation, I just needed a week off work, and I, I, we get so many hours to use, and I have to use them before, you can't take them after, um, let's see, I, I know you can't take them in November 
on. So it's like November to January 1st, you can't take any vacation days. But you also can't take vacation days across holidays. So it kind of limits. And there's, there's four of us um, in my little, that work at my store that we have to, we can't, two of us are not supposed to be on vacation at once. So it does kind of get a little, you have to just kind of sometimes take it when you take it. So that's what I'm doing this week. Just kind of chilling out, relaxing. Um, I'm probably going to get quite a bit of crochet and knitting done. One of my goals this week is to update my Etsy shop and really work on that. Get my stuff that I've made put on there, post it, get this, just, just clean it up and kind of, you know, I still just have not gotten onto that. I don't know what is up with me and why I just don't feel like doing it, but that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, I don't know that there's really anything else um, going on this week so far. Um, you can see in the background over here, that's my weaving loom. I have been, or my triangle loom. I guess I can call it a weaving loom. Um, I have been working on that some. You can, this is not the same yarn that was on it that first time I showed it to you. This is a different one. So, um... Once I get a little bit farther along, I will show it to you again. The problem I'm having now is that it's hurting my arms because it's so high on the, on the wall. I'm going to save up and get me one of those, um, one of the stands is what I'm going to do. So, um, and this is over here is my spinning wheel, which I'm going to try to really get back into doing this week, probably while I'm off. Um, I really enjoy it. I'm not that great at it, but I really enjoy it. So I want to really get back into that. So that's kind of my plans is to clean the house, work on my stuff, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the plans for this week. And, uh, yeah. So, um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, there is, um... There's one more thing I wanted to ask to kind of get some opinions on. I don't call this a podcast, and I don't, like, have it necessarily set up, like, in sections. I try to kind of, you know, I do works in pro or finished works in progress, and then I kind of talk about random crap at the end. So, it kind of does have a, a, a flow, I guess. Um... But I kind of started it as a just a things that I have finished type video, not a, as a podcast. But sh do you guys think, do you guys want me to format it more like a podcast? Do you want more of me talking about stuff? Um, like, you know, that could, do you want me to kind of start transitioning towards that kind of more like a podcast? Or is the format that it's in now what you guys like? So just a question. I mean, you know, I thought about getting a little notebook and kind of taking some notes about stuff that I do during the week that's, like, interesting or that kind of stuff, you know, and kind of going that and just making it a little bit more formatted, a little bit more, you know, because those are the kind of podcasts I actually enjoy watching. Um, I've noticed that most of the ones I watch have kind of a sectioned type thing going on. But, yeah. So, just, just let me know. Anyway... I'm going to wrap this up. It's almost an hour long. That's really long for me. But anyway, I hope you guys have a nice day, and I'll see you later. Bye.